Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mama Beach and I'm here today to do a requested video. And I have to give a shout out to my viewer, Angela, who, request, who requested this. She contacted me on Facebook and I've actually known her for a few years now on Facebook. So thank you so much, Angela. This is a great topic. And the topic is bags that I feel like are classic, timeless staples. That if somebody was going to just purchase a few bags that I feel like would get them through a lifetime, that these are the ones I would pick for my collection. And I tried to pick a variety of brands and price ranges, but these are really truly in my heart what I feel like are classic timeless bags that are worth the investment and will last you forever. So the very first one on this list is of course how I started out as a handbag collector and YouTuber, and that is a Dooney & Burke Florentine satchel. Listen, I don't care that Dooney & Burke isn't considered to be the most trendy, young, hip brand. Do you know why? Because that's not what this video is about. This video is about timeless, classic elegance that will last the test of time and is so high quality, it's worth the investment, and this fits all of those criteria. Dunienberg Florentine leather is just unparalleled. You cannot get better leather anywhere else from any other handbag brand. I am sorry. I do love Coach Glove Tan Leather, it's great. I do love Landskin from Chanel, it's great. But Florentine Leather has a character and a life to it that just doesn't exist anywhere else on this planet, in my opinion, and Dooney & Burke has the lock on it. I would definitely invest in a Florentine satchel. If you're just starting out and you really wanna get a staple, staple handbag, I would get it in the natural color. It is the hardest to keep to keep clean. It is the hardest to take care of. It is the most high maintenance, but it is the most magical leather I have ever seen because you literally watch it transform before your very eyes. It starts out very light and it turns into a dark honey patina over time, just like Fachetta does on um, Louis Vuitton bags. And it is wonderful to watch the transformation happen. And this is a super rare color called Aqua. There's a lot of other really great colors out there. If you're starting out and you wanna get something basic, I would always go with the small size. This is the small size Florentine satchel. I feel like it's the most versatile. It's pretty heavy, but not nearly as heavy as the medium. And I really prefer the mini size, but I don't carry much. And I feel like with the small, you have the versatility to be able to carry a little bit or a lot, and it works for either. It comes with the long strap, you can wear it crossbody, you can double the strap and wear it as a short drop shoulder bag, and you can carry it by the handles. So it, there's just tons of different ways to carry it. And honestly, I feel like it's a great investment piece for anybody out there who wants to get started collecting handbags and doesn't wanna waste their money on trendy stuff. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is, I feel like everyone should have some sort of chain bag or flat bag in their collection. I've pulled out two that I think are spectacular, timeless staples. Of course, Chanel is the big boy in this category, but Chanel is really expensive. If you can afford to pick up a flat bag from Chanel, do it. You won't regret it. It only goes up in value. There's wonderful investments, wonderful quality. Um, this is a mini, um, a mini flat bag. And honestly, if you're gonna go for one, get this one. I know it's really small. I know it's really small and it doesn't carry much. And it looks silly because you're gonna spend three or four thousand dollars on a bag this size. But honestly, I think this is the soundest investment when it comes to Chanel bags. I mean, any flat bag is gonna do well in terms of its value, oops, excuse me. But mini bags, these mini flat bags are just, the value increase is just crazy. It's crazy, they only go up, they only go up in value. And if you take care of it and use it for special occasions and condition it regularly, wipe it down regularly, this could last you a lifetime and you could go ahead and sell it 10 years from now and make thousands of dollars because these are only going up in value. It's amazing. So if you can afford to get a mini flat bag by Chanel, I would recommend that you do it. I think it's a great investment, great quality, like I said, if you can't. And honestly, most people can't, I get it. I would go with the Fleming bag from Tory Burch. This is spectacular. I love, 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 love this bag. I've had so many people ask to buy it for me. The answer is no. I love it. I carry it all the time. It is so incredibly classic 
It is a great size. So it is a narrow and taller style. You have to stack your stuff in here, which can annoy some people, but honestly, it holds a ton. If you're willing to do that, it holds so much stuff. This is the medium size, which is actually the largest. They have a small size, which also holds a decent amount. I just wanted the biggest one because if I'm gonna choose between this and this, I wanna have a good, a big enough size difference that it makes sense to have both of these in my collection. And this is just, love it, love it. It is also lambskin. You can see this one is caviar, so it's a little more durable. Caviar leather from Chanel is extremely hardy, um, way more than you would think. This is a smooth lambskin, which means it scratches. I mean, you can't really see the scratches on the quilted portion, but anything smooth like this, it's gonna pick up scratches. That's just how it goes. Just embrace it, condition your bag regularly, check the corners regularly because they are going to wear and just be okay with it. It's still gonna look beautiful, I promise you. You're not gonna notice the scratches. You're just gonna love it so much, you won't. Um, the next bag I wanna talk about is, I think it's important to have a good crossbody. And if you're gonna pick a crossbody that I feel like is the best investment and quality, I would go with the Louis Vuitton Favorite MM. This bag is so popular. It's so hard to get your hands on and the value just keeps increasing. Honestly, I think it's a really great investment if you're looking for a crossbody. I understand it's not the most inexpensive option. I would pick it up used on the resale market. Most Louis Vuitton bags, especially these older ones um, that you're not buying brand new from the boutique in this day and time, are great quality. They hold up really well. They hold their value really well. Go on the pre-owned market and wait and snatch one for a really good price. I guarantee the value will only go up if you treat it nicely and take care of it. And when you turn around and sell it someday, it will hold its value if not increase in value. And this, the great thing about this particular crossbody is because it's all canvas for the most part, it is so incredibly lightweight. So if you are someone that has back and shoulder issues, definitely take a look at Louis Vuitton. Most of their classic bags are done in canvas and they're so lightweight and easy to carry and easy to care for. Now this one has the fascetta strap, which makes it a little bit more high maintenance, but you can pick this up in Damier Ben print, which has treated leather, which means you don't have to worry about the fascetta. So if you're looking for something low maintenance, I would go with that print instead. But great bag, awesome crossbody style, holds a ton because it's so malleable. You can really pack it full. And this magnet closure, it's just, it's amazing. So that would be my recommendation for a crossbody. The next one I wanna talk about is kind of redundant. I mean, it's kind of like the Florentine satchel of the coach world, right? But I have to put it on this list because I feel like it is so classic and it is a great investment. And that is a rogue satchel. If you're just starting out and you wanna go with something basic, once again, I would go with the 30 slash 31 size. Um, they have smaller sizes. They have a 17, which is itty bitty. They have a 25, which I actually prefer because it's lighter weight, but you can't hold as much in it. They have a 36, which is bigger than this, and they have a 39. But this 30 slash 31 size is really perfect for somebody who wants to be able to carry it a good amount or a little bit and it fits everything easily and I feel like it's kind of middle of the road crowd pleaser style. Now this one is a made to order order specialty rogue which is why it has all these crazy colors but you can get them in all sorts of basic shades black, red, brown. It's just you can get pretty much any color you want in one of these bags and once again like the Florentine satchel the leather quality is really amazing. It's really amazing, it's pebbled, it's gonna hold up well. I would definitely go with the pebbled leather. I wouldn't get a smooth rogue, I wouldn't get a suede rogue. Those are just, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> I would definitely get the pebbled leather. Um, you have the versatility of having either a satchel carry with the handles. This is cool because it comes with two shorter shoulder straps. I actually prefer carrying it this way because it makes it more like a tote and it makes it way more comfortable on the shoulder having two straps that are nice and flat. Or you can connect the straps and go up and over both sides here and you can do it crossbody. I wouldn't recommend it. It really hurts your shoulder. You can get a novelty strap that's thicker. If you want to wear it crossbody, that's what I would recommend because it will hold the weight more. 
also a very heavy bag, but that's because you're getting the quality here and that's really what you're paying for and that's why you wanna invest in bags like these. You can see the whole thing has a suede interior, which is just amazing. It's definitely a luxury quality without the huge luxury price tag. Now you can go pay a thousand dollars for a Rogue, but I wouldn't. I'd go on the resale market again, pick up something basic, pick up, some, pick up something at a great price, and I guarantee you when you go to sell it down the road, it will hold its value and you will love carrying it every second that you carry it. The last bag on my list, I know, I, I thought about it for a while, but I feel like I have to include it because it is so classic and timeless and it's so popular for so many years. And that is a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Now, not a lot of people don't like Neverfulls. I happen to like them. Yes, the straps are short. Yes, the straps are narrow. But honestly, they're such a practical bag. If you're just starting out, I would get an MM. MM is the medium size. They have a PM, which is actually right there. And they have a GM, which is even larger. So yes, if you're someone who doesn't carry much, maybe you look at the PM or the GM. But if you're trying to get a crowd pleaser that you think is gonna not only please yourself in terms of what you can hold in it, but also when you think about resale, what most people are gonna want is kind of the middle of the road bag. So it's gonna hold its value extremely well. Way better than the PM. And I think the GM holds its value pretty well because a lot of people really like the big size. But the MM is really classic. This is in the monogram print, so you have to worry about the fascetta a little bit. It's high maintenance. But like I said, you can get it, like I said about this guy, you can get it in the Damien Ben print, which is very low maintenance and pretty much worry-free because all the leather's treated. And then you have the canvas, which is super durable. And once again, lightweight. So you can really pack this puppy full and it's not gonna feel as heavy on your shoulder as a really um, thick leather tote, kind of like that long shop, which I almost included on this list because I love that tote, but I just feel like it's not as classic as a Neverfull MM. So if you're gonna go with a tote and you have the money to spend, go pick this up on the resale market. You can get them with a kind of beat up condition like this one I have here for like $500 maybe or maybe less. And honestly, when you look at the pictures and see the condition, you're gonna go, oh gosh, there's stains, the fascetta's dark, but when you actually get it and start using it and realize you don't have to baby it because it's not perfect, it's really a blessing. So if you can push past that and get something that maybe has a couple of issues for cheap, then I feel like you don't need to worry about it as much. And honestly, it will still hold its value because it is so popular. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have any suggestions for bags that you think are classic and timeless staples, I would love to read them below in the comment section. And honestly, I feel like this kind of makes a great tag video. So anybody out there who's watching this that is a YouTuber, please go ahead and do it as a tag. I don't know, let's call the tag classic timeless staples that you know are in your collection that you feel like people should invest in. I think I think people wanna know this that aren't collecting gobs of handbags like a lot of us here on YouTube and they just wanna buy a few staples. I think it's valuable knowledge for, all, for us that have tons and have used them. What do we think? What's out there that people really should invest their money in? So if you're a YouTuber, feel free to do this video as well as a tag and tag other people. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, I hope that you will. I do lots of videos like this and, to, and also like unboxings, reviews, comparisons, all that kind of stuff. So if you love handbags like I do, please join my channel. I know you'll love it. All right, I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye.